Who can we trust when it comes to our food? Well, today we're going to dive deep in a new outbreak, a super bug. But where does it stem from? What are we having the issues with the most and why is it here and why is it affecting Americans more than the rest of the world? Let's jump into it today. This is going to be a good video and eye-opening because when we hear of healthy food or we hear that this is good for you, this doesn't have any kind of chemicals, is it truth? Let's jump into it because he's got something to say. Video starts right now. I can hear it in your voice Though you haven't said that Hey guys, welcome to the Max. Thank you so much for being here today. If you're new to the channel, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, but let us know what you think about this video. The whole point of this video is not only talking about this new outbreak that they're discussing, and it's something that is going on that no one wants to talk about. It's almost like a silent killer or something that's going to end up causing more harm to our population in just in America. And then we're gonna discuss what the repercussions of it but not only that, why did we cause it in the first place? We as Americans, let's jump into it. So today's discussion is all about chicken. We as Americans eat more chicken than just about anywhere else in the world. Now you hear them, they're going crazy. And I actually uh, more and more have changed my opinion on chicken. For the longest, chicken's always been the leaner meat, the quality, cleaner, good meat for you more than anything else in the world. That's what's been pushed on us. Well, red meat could be bad for you, eat chicken. If you're working out, eat chicken. If you're trying to lose weight, eat chicken. Well, all those things could be correct, but it was brought on to you by more propaganda and psyops and actually not by truth. And because of that, we now have this superbug that's causing damage to Americans. So let's start back with a little history. And the reason I wanted to be up here because I, it's featuring these chickens, so you're gonna hear that rooster go crazy. All during this video but chicken were not actually something that we ate a lot of especially before the world war ii world war ii really saw a push in chicken in the years after that because soldiers and people in war needed the red meat so they started rationing red meat all of a sudden you saw the movement of more chicken being ate chicken was one of those things that cost a lot of money to raise before a lot of the changes that we're going to be talking about it was expensive and also there was not a lot of meat on the bone it was not a big animal like most birds if you think of any other birds that you're pretty much harvesting or honey they don't have a lot of meat on them you have to have a lot of them to make a meal but then all of a sudden it changed did you know a hundred years ago chickens that were being eaten especially from the 20s and 40s and nearly even into the 50s were four times smaller than they are now why well because you had homestead chickens people raising them for themselves you had a few farms that were raising them to sell but it cost so much because they were having to feed them so much they were not gaining a lot of weight like a lot of other animals they were not huge animals so when we saw a ration in the world war ii era where they were giving soldiers more of the red meat to get them strong again red meat being one of the best sources of all your minerals and nutrients that anyone would need and therefore why is the government pushing against red meat but i digress we'll talk about that in another video then it opened up a market for chicken well if it cost a lot to raise and they were not having a lot of meat on it you saw more people say okay what can we do to make this bird all of a sudden grow what can we do to make this bird make us money but also feed the world and also do it better than we've done it before then all of a sudden you saw the movement towards the Cornish cross or the crosses that now you see in commercial operations such as grow houses. You see big producers like Tyson, Cargill and so forth coming up with this awesome chicken. Now what was getting them to that size? And that's what we're gonna get into when it comes to the outbreak. What was making these chickens grow? Well, they started crossing and, and trying to start figuring out what made the best chicken. Well, then they kept crossing, kept crossing. Then they learned how to grow them. How can you grow them? They're getting fed corn and soy. Uh, that stuff is not the best for us, but that's what was feeding these birds. Well, then they realized they started feeding too much or they were on top of each other. Then all of a sudden they were either getting sick or they were not making it to processing time. So therefore it cut into our profits. What was the one thing they needed? What was it? Corn and soy they were already feeding. They were raising mass amounts in these little grow houses. Then all of a sudden they realized why don't we look at giving them antibiotics? Antibiotics not only could make them be more resistant towards diseases, 
it also made them grow faster. So when you hear someone say, well, they don't have steroids or antibiotics, well, they don't because they've been so genetically modified to grow quicker, bigger, faster. But what was the key to it? Antibiotics, antibiotics. Now let's jump into why that could be a dangerous thing. Antibiotics are not bad, but when they're overused, that's when it becomes a problem. So we're not really talking about the history of just chicken in general, but this leads me to the next point. When we start feeding antibiotics to these birds, it made a bird that didn't die. It's exactly right. But remember, it was giving them weight, basically not on food, but on the antibiotics it was taking in. If you've ever seen a Cornish cross, or you've ever been in a grow house, or you ever grew them, like we used to grow Cornish cross. And we would say we were growing them more natural and holistic and organic, but ultimately it was still a genetically modified bird. I don't care which way you look at it, birds were not supposed to be these monster double-breasted animals and the five to 10 pounds of, uh, of, of meat off this carcass. I'm sorry, it just was not meant to be that way. Remember, 100 years ago, four times smaller. But here's the problem, if we're giving these birds antibiotics all the time even when they don't need it what happens you are now developing a super bug because what's happening is these bacteria that they are still getting that these bacteria that they are getting in contact with they're learning to grow and they're learning to be antibiotic resistant so therefore even with the birds being treated you're now developing a salmonella that is getting through and the antibiotics is not helping to treat it. Name one thing that you always hear with chicken. Now you can, you can make a medium rare steak. You can even make a, you know, a medium burger. You can cook your, your fish uh, not all the way through. But what do they always tell you with chicken? Wash your hands good, make sure you have a clean surface and make sure you cook it thoroughly. Why? Because of salmonella. One out of four birds they say could possibly have salmonella coming out of a grow house. Well, how is that possible? Remember, we're giving them tons of antibiotics. This is over and over and over again. We're just, we're just feeding full of antibiotics. How are they still getting salmonella? Because the bacteria has developed resistance towards the antibiotic. And that is bad. Do you realize there is a lot of sickness to salmonella? You see salmonella outbreaks all the time, but nobody hardly talks about it. But if all of a sudden we see a disease resistant salmonella that is now getting through the bird to the person, if the salmonella is that strong, what's to say antibiotics are gonna help us? Remember, we're eating meat that has antibiotics already in it. It is induced with, with all this stuff, chemicals or treatment. Well, that chemicals and treatment is getting into our body and therefore that bacteria resistant uh, salmonella or any other superbug is surpassing what, what the antibiotic can do for you. We are developing a major scarcity because what we're doing is even though antibiotics can be used for so good, because remember, we do get bacteria that's not good for us. And if we don't abuse antibiotics and we don't overtake antibiotics and we have a clean diet, the antibiotics can, man, take care of anything quickly. I, I challenge you to always have emergency antibiotics on hand. We've talked about that. But when it comes down to if we're taking antibiotics all the time and we realize these chickens and this, this food, this meat sources, because we want convenience, we don't want to have to do it ourselves. If we realize all this food that we're taking in has already gotten resistant strains of bacteria in it, what are we going to do when all of a sudden we see more superbugs, more salmonellas, more diseases, more bacteria get into our bodies and we can't do nothing about it because it is stronger than the antibiotic. Does that mean we need more pharmaceuticals? I don't know. Does that mean we need stronger pharmaceuticals? I don't know. Or does it mean we need to go back to the way that we should raise chickens? Did you know that most of our chicken is banned in other countries? They won't even take it in because of the antibiotics we gave it. Now I'm gonna talk about the pharmaceutical name, but there's a big name in pharmaceuticals that's got a bad name lately, but they produced a, a drug called Roxazone that pretty much went into our chickens and we realized it was dangerous. Up until 2011, it was still in our chicken and it was still in our meat. And what it was doing is we were giving it to the chickens and actually it was causing cancers. It was a parasite killing substance, but it was also causing major, major problems for most Americans and most people that were ingesting it. So they, again, they banned that substance, which is a good thing, but then they're still allowing a lot of things to happen like the antibiotics. You know, another thing that we've seen now where uh, to try to make your chicken better and not have to have so much antibiotics is now we're, we're, when we go to process the animals, you're seeing them getting dipped in this nasty water, but then get dipped in chlorine and all of a sudden that's supposed to clean it. Pool chlorine is like two parts per million. So basically when you're in a chlorine pool, 
is two parts per million chlorine. You know what your chicken's dipped in? 50 parts per million chlorine. So when you worry about chlorine, when you worry about all these chemicals, or do you worry about the salmonella? So, so do we worry about a chicken that is unclean, and but we're, we have a ton of antibiotics, but we're building a superbug, or do we want a cleaner animal but is dipped in tons of chlorine, which is a chemical? Both of those are bad for you. Both of those are bad for you. And it was all in the name of bigger business to make a bigger chicken to make you more convenient so you won't have to raise them on farm. To make it where you cannot have these little scrawny birds. You wanted the big, fluffy, fat chickens. Did you know if you take a bird, like a typical, like these ones we had and that was just cockadoodle doing a while ago, those birds have taken about three to six months to actually grow to size that they need to be. 90 to 180 days. However, a Cornish cross can grow to full size in 49 days and they'll get to a point where they can't even walk because they have so much weight and their legs are not meant to hold them. They won't even grow enough feathers to cover their body because they've been so modified to grow quicker than even their feathers can keep up with. Do you actually think that's good for you? Here's my plea to you. We're developing a super bug all because of convenience. We are trying to get clean, and so we're taking in more chemicals with chlorine. We talked about this with the water videos we've done. I'm pleading with you, learn to grow your own food. Now, if you can't grow chickens here on, on your own property, now, if it's to do a major discount with another provider on one of those chicken tractors, if you have a way to grow some eggs and grow some chicken, all of this will rely on cleaner products for you to eat. You won't be dealing with the salmonella. You won't be dealing with the fact of all these uh, chlorines dipped in, these chlorine vats, because you're raising your own. Here's something else. If you can't raise them, that's okay. Learn to co-op. Tell you what we did a few years back. Uh, because we raise so many now, we try not to uh, co-op a lot now, just because we try to raise just for our family. But what a lot of times we were doing back years ago is we would go in with uh, a few families, buy a lot of chicken, and for those families who did not have the land or did not have the opportunity to grow them, what they would do is grow them here, they would pay for the feed, then we'd come together, process together, and we would split the birds. That's a great thought for someone who doesn't live in a place where they could raise their own chickens. For eggs or for the meat. Don't risk your health and don't risk the fact of these super bugs actually causing more and more damage all in the name of convenience. The chicken that you're eating in the store, the chicken that you're eating in fast food, it's not healthy for you. It's so overly processed, it has so many chemicals in it, and also it's full of antibiotics. Now they can get around a lot of labeling with USDA because they are such a big provider, such a big food conglomerate. But when it says like no antibiotics, no preservatives, and, and that might be true, but then think about their feet. What's in their feet? Remember a lot of these chicken providers grow their own feet. A lot of these chicken providers own their own farms. All they do is provide the people with jobs to grow. What's been modified in the chicken itself? Like I told you, this chicken's growing in 49 days and it's becoming a monster. You know, I used to love raising Cornish Cross because I thought we were cleaning up our diet. We were doing better. But then years of seeing these birds die, years of seeing these birds trying to eat, eat each other because they were so hungry all the time, seeing them die with the storm. They couldn't even be outside because they were, we were too worried about them getting hurt. But then we realized these birds are not what we're supposed to be raising on farm, especially on a regenerative farm like ourselves. So when you come to our farm, you're gonna see smaller pigs that don't have a ton of fat because they're in a forest. They're getting high quality food and it's rationed and then they learn to forage for the rest. You're gonna see our dairy cows not produce as much milk because we keep them on a strict diet. They have good quality food. They're giving us good quality milk, but it, they're not gonna give us in surplus because they're not on a certain coin and soy diet. You're gonna see our beef cows. A lot of times people come to our beef cow and they're like, man, they're, they're beautiful, but they're smaller because our cows are not supposed to be as big as buffalo. They're cows. We raise them holistically. When we start seeing food raised back like it's supposed to, we're gonna see a different change and we're gonna think, wow, these, these cows and these chicken and these sheep and these all these animals look totally different. It's because they're raised like they're supposed to not raised like conventional farming's done now. Our food is killing us and it's giving us sickness and it's making us more fat and it's making us more unhealthy, all in the name of convenience. Please be careful. These kind of outbreaks are happening more and more. Look and do your research and see how many salmonella outbreaks have been. 
see the fact that people are still dying from salmonella because they can't figure out what's caused this healthy person and in 24 to 48 hours almost take a turn for the worst and either die or get so close to it all because of salmonella not because salmonella can't be controlled the version they have is already like a super bug because the antibiotics does not work so be careful what you're putting in your body ingesting when we think about fruits remember what we talked about with the apples our apples are banned in most countries because of the coating on the outside because they've been modified when other countries don't want our food that should prove to us that we shouldn't be eating the food itself because we're causing our people to be more sick these are true outbreaks that's happening and nobody wants to talk about them because it's our food system. We have a broken food system until we get back on top of it and try to grow our own food. We're gonna keep being sick, we're gonna keep relying on medicine, and we're gonna keep being lazy people that are inundated with medical problems all because convenience. Challenge you, grow your own food. We do appreciate you watching daily. Uh, let us know what you think about us doing daily posting. We've tried to do daily posting for about the last 45 days. Let me know if you like that. Do you like the fact that we're trying to do shorter videos and also do them more frequently on a lot of different subjects? Let us know below. Guys, thank you so much for watching. God bless. Happy home today, y'all.